Hello and welcome to a field trip. My name is Massimiliano Bollona and I am a, an anthropologist uh, working at Goldsmith College. I received the AFIL Fellowship in 2017 for a project that I did with the, the artist and activist Zeno Pekunlu based in Istanbul. This year, I was uh, lucky enough to lead the inaugural AFIL study program, which uh, was titled Together. Together uh, meant for me to try to think how art and artists could contribute to uh, build and imagine together a future uh, of uh, uh, cohesion and solidarity and uh, physical gatherings and uh, 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 let's say uh, post uh, capitalist uh, structures and uh, um, including artistic production uh, just after the pandemic. So it was a program of study that came really from this kind of desire to leave behind the isolation and fragmentation the pandemic had uh, created, but also the, uh, the kind of fragmentation and alienation of the system, which really the, the pandemic had highlighted. For me, I feel uh, really signifies this, this kind of uh, uh, network of friends and colleagues to rely on for uh, Mutu solidarity, but also for uh, friendship and uh, expanding, let's say, our own visions. Uh, so today I, uh, I'll be visiting uh, Filippa, Filippa Cesar, a uh, filmmaker and uh, researcher and uh, much more. Um, hi, Filippa. First, uh, where are you? What, what city are you in? <laughs> I'm not in a city. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a little fisher village in the south of Portugal called Fuzeta. Uh, uh, next to, it's just the, the first, one of the first villages next to Olhão. I'm here for having a break actually, so I'm not in the place where I normally work, but I wish actually to work more here. <laughs> here. What uh, connects me with this place is that my grandfather was um, coming from the the, the city just next to it. And he was in, involved in the fishing can industry. I don't know how to explain that, but it's, he was running one of these one of his, um, factories in the 40s and 50s and 60s and so on. So I received the, the field fellowship in 2018 with, together with Sanan Hada, the militant filmmaker from Guinea-Bissau. And we received it with the project of the Mediatek Onshore. That is um, a project that we started as a continuation of the, the archival project that we were doing since 2011. And um, that culminated into, in, the, in the digitalization of the, uh, of the militant film that were produced by San Anada, Flora Gomes, uh, and, and, um, and others uh, in the context of the liberation war of Guinea-Bissau against Portugal occupation, Portuguese colonialism. So we were working for many years with these images and using these images to, to think about the present as well and, and, and uh, and think with others and also to um, to assemble people together and produce knowledge together and this project culminated also in a film called Spell Wheel that we did as a, as a kind of a, a journey through this through this process and then we understood that we needed a place to not only to accommodate the archive but to continue these practices uh, in Guinea-Bissau. The Meditech, in a way, it's the result of something that we were finding out that we actually need. So working with the images in this kind of nomad, we made mobile cinemas uh, in many, many places in Guinea-Bissau, and we were um, understanding that this format of just going to a place, setting up a, a, a screen, and uh, and convoking people through the radio and then having this kind of like two, three, four hours, uh, sometimes over 
many days sessions with the population was um, with with the images that were coming from there from you know produced in the country uh, was a very was kind of producing a moment of consciousness where everybody was conscious of that very moment there was a sense of um, of togetherness, of sharing something that was very real, uh, and th and the communication that were produced and the conversations were very um, focused on on uh, convoking the the past and and using it to think about their conditions in that very moment. I think yeah, that was something that made people very very present, you know, and maybe you know because in the daily life people are worried about you know having to find food or having to earn money or the problems at home, you know, but that moment made everybody think about one issue uh, together. And, and so we understood we wanted to create a space that, that can have these kind of moments. And, and, and then we also, I mean, the, the other was coming from the need because we, we try to put the archive, you know, to deliver the archive, to, to restitute the archive to, to the country. And we, we encounter a lot of difficulties, you know, because uh, the Film Institute, the Inca in Bissau doesn't have the conditions to, you know, it's always in a kind of like unstable situation because it's like always mirroring the political situation so it's always like as unstable as the as the political situation what was interesting is that we understood that it had to be like a communal place that has another kind of con uh, um, continuity in a way and also stability that the the governments or the state connected um, structures in the city don't have and this was very beautiful because then you understand like uh, despite you know like despite the, the trouble of this kind of post-colony situation of guinea bissau there are places you know that still have you know that still have a structure and they still have a continuity that and this could be the place that could not only uh, host the archive but also be a place where we could gather in a more kind of protective and and um place yeah yeah, and that, that leads me to, to the next um, question, uh, which is a reflection a little bit of how you contributed to the strand uh, of uh, um, image as assembly, which was a strand that I thought, I mean, when I thought about the strand, I thought immediately of your practices, actually, and because uh, the way I thought about these uh, um, aspects of uh, the uh, study program was to think how images could create a, a social gathering or uh, let's say forms of assemblies that uh, um, in a way were not necessarily dependent on uh, the act of uh, let's say on the image as a, as a, as a commercial product of the image as, a, as a, a, an artifact that the filmmaker uh, creates as an author. And, and it seems to me that your practices are so inspiring in the way they operate at, at multiple levels. And, and some of your film become nearly kind of collective production or co-productions because you follow that process of activations of people and social relations. So um, yeah, I felt that your practice is very inspiring. Um, but for me, the, 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 the kind of element that you bring together is this element of producing knowledge uh, so the kind of pedagogical aspect uh, of, uh, of course, producing also quite beautiful images and at the same time reactivating uh, political memories or political consciousness. So is this combination of, let's say, radical pedagogy, activism or, or kind of uh, um, political activism and art making that I found very inspiring in your work? I, I, I wonder if you like to respond to this i feel extremely uncomfortable with the with the with the issue of authorship the concept of authorship is very connected with this the structure of colonial power you know like you name something and it's yours you know all these gestures that we um you know applaud and um and celebrate and you know so so i think for me, if 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 I engage myself in this in this kind of journey of decolonization, it's a kind of a 
yeah, a kind of a path, uh, um, a quest as well, then I have to question, you know, like all the structures that I'm in, kind of to how much this idea of like uh, stamping a name and uh, uh, being the author, being the, 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 the director, all these words, you know, like always are, uh, are forms of um, uh, casting a spell of power over something. When I start to work with, with Sana, and I think Sana, in a way, he was very much my mentor. He was 12 years when he entered the, 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 the colonial war and the liberation war. And, um, and then all his life was actually about being in this kind of collective journey of decolonization. And when I understood this from him, basically, I understood that um, he was always never wanting something for himself, but for, you know, for a, a collective cause or for, a, you know, to create an environment, you know, like, and, and or to, to feed the uh, deliberation of an environment. And, and so this is very, very beautiful. And I, I learned a lot from him and I, I go on learning from him. The images, if they are uh, used and, and um, shown in this, in this collective environment, it's like, yeah, there's something of a ritual because that, that you make everybody having the same kind of visions at the same time, you know, like we are having the same vision. And I think that's, that's the moment where we understood that these assemblies, uh, or he, I mean, you, you coined the, you coined the, the, the word uh, images as assembly, but I like a lot because it's, yeah, I think it connects with this idea of, of, of the collectivity and also like this idea of you're going out of your own uh, private issues and like being there for reflecting together. It made me think also uh, about this, uh, the filmmaker Barry Barclay, who used to talk about authorship in the same way, in the, the, how important it is to actually have a, a connection with the community, both in terms of uh, uh, socializing, let's say, the process, but also in terms of feeling this, this, to, this togetherness, this kind of this uh, political connection. Next question, what is your political and cultural background, how you navigate between your activism and your role as an artist, a filmmaker who's also, you know, in, inserted in the kind of global circuit? Yeah, I mean, politically, I... Um... I mean, I think I, I was also raised in a, you know, like in a artist left-wing family, also with a father that was, uh, you know, like that, that rebelled from a, you know, conservative family and escaped from home and went to study art. And at the same time, uh, when he was in the second year of, of the sculpture art um, school, he had to uh, march to the war. And this, um, and then he tried to escape, and then he failed the escape, and then he was afraid, and then he marched to the war, and then he was there for three and a half years. You know, like so, what it was very violent, and basically, I think all our family is overshadowed by this. You know, you always need a generation to start working on these issues because you don't have mechanisms to to really work out what happened. I think that there was not even a conscience that, that there was a war trauma there at all. I mean, something that we are starting in Portugal now 40 years later to, to discuss it or to talk about it. Um, and I think as a child, I remember there was something that puzzled me always. It's kind of like there was this past, there was this 70s when I was born, but I know there was something that was um, very beautiful, it was the revolution, and it was always like, we celebrated also always with a lot of music, and, and my father told stories, and it was like really something magical, and everything before was dark and ugly and dictatorship, you know, like so. And then at the same time, the present was a little bit like, uh, not really echoing, you know, like it was this 80s, 90s, you know, like where, um, the neoliberalism in Portugal kind of like entered with all this power and people were like um, very much always under pressure about money and about, you know, like there was this kind of like 
people were really, I felt that everybody was oppressed by, by this um, scarcity of, of means. And, and I think, so for me, I was like, why there was this imbalance between like what I live here where everybody seems oppressed and always stressed and not don't have money. And, you know, like, and this was like general, it was not only my, my family. And then there was always this kind of like past that was like magical and happy. And then I understood there was something there. And I think that's when I, in 2007, I did this film, Le Passeur, where I actually go inside all these, the, the people escaping the war. And I went to this circuit of friends of my parents to know how they were organizing these passages. And this was like open up a, a really beautiful world of people getting engaged and uh, caring for each other and this underground world this smuggling world very creative because that's this smuggling world is always very creative and and passionate so there's something like everybody was passionate about what they're doing and and these were actually the best friends of my father my parents you know so I knew them since ever so for me and then I so there was something there that I still think is valid today that got lost in 80s and 90s with neoliberalism and with the consumerism and I think this is this is something, I mean, if I connect with my past, I think this is a little bit where I can position my politics or they're always connected with this experience. And also with the pain that my father, unfortunately, was kind of sucked uh, by many things that he couldn't work. So in a way, like, but it's always like this thing that we are also working the lives of our ancestors in a way like we are continuing or changing or transforming. I collaborate with many people and Sonia uh, Vajborges and Sana are part of the core and also others. And I think we have different tools that it's nice that we bring them together. It was I think November 2012 and Sonia was in the room when we showed the return of Emilka Cabral that is uh, we can we now consider the first Guinean film that they did collectively in 1976. Almost everybody came to my place just after the screening. And, and then Sonia told me that she was working on her PhD. She was doing a PhD in the Umwald University in Berlin on the militant education system of the PhD in Guinea-Bissau. And then, so you can imagine that we start being in touch from then on and then we we start to invite each other for our events and and so it started to, to be a very beautiful dialogue and conversation also like this we also had this idea like every time you you get in touch with the with the liberation movement of these you know, it's like you get enchanted and you can't get out of it and so tom hollard artist and curator and writer from berlin he he invited us and we did a little film that was called The Navigating the Pilot School that was very beautiful. Basically, I brought the images that we had from the pilot school in, in Conakry and Sonia brought the memories of the school that the people had. So we brought it together and we made this very simple film. And then recently when Tom said, oh, don't you want to do another work? on the education system of the PHSC. And I remember that Sonia told me about the schools that existed, that, that were built in the liberated zones. And some of them were built inside of the mangroves. I mean, these alluvian landscapes. And actually Sonia herself didn't know exactly what the mangrove was. She was like, she knew it was a plant, but she didn't know it was like an environment. And I, I was very much connected with this idea of the mangroves and the rhizome, you know, like already from, you know, from yeah, for reading Guattari and Deleuze, so I came with this kind of, but the mangroves are this kind of, you know, it's it's an it's an own environment, it's an own kind of world, and she said, oh, really? And, you know, like, so basically she came with her knowledge of the, of knowing the, about these schools, and so basically it was, yeah, coming, bringing this together, and then the third part is, like, also um, the Mediateca, so we were going also to the Mediateca, to Malafu, to prepare the building of the Mediateca and and this and Malafu also has a whole area of mangroves that you know before the rice field so yeah and then basically these three things came together and we decided to make the film there everybody brings something to this like it's not that we we could substitute each other so I come with this knowledge of editing and montage and 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 um, and also the shooting I know how to organize the shooting center as well 
And Sonia, you know, she came with this uh, story of like bre breaking a pencil, you know, like the, the children didn't have enough uh, pencils in this school. So they would take one pencil and they would break it and, mm -hmm. and share it. So all these details that she had from her knowledge. So basically it was how, how can we bring all these knowledges together and then the magic comes. I think that's, yeah, that, what, what I like a lot about these collaborations is that, you know, it's, it doesn't have, to, it has nothing to do with even being even or equal or like, we cannot substitute each other, but the, the, to the togetherness of all the details actually make it uh, interesting, I think. I would, I would define social transformation in this moment of um, being conscious of being of the entanglement of, 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 of everybody and of, of the people and also of the environment of nature of this kind of th that we are not separated I mean that all this we are all different but we are all connected and um, and, in, and interdependent.